Wilson, we welcome you to the Zoom. So we, we thank you for joining us. I know it's, it's a little different than what we are normally used to with media days, but um, we appreciate you joining us. And, and as I was mentioning before, we're gonna let you actually kind of open up with uh, an opening statement, however you may, um, and before we kind of get things going with some questions. So go ahead, Coach. Thank you so much, Maddie. Uh, just so you know, for the last three minutes, I've been saying, hello, Maddie, I'm here. <laughs> While you were saying, we're waiting for Coach, and I was saying, I'm here. So I was punctual. I just couldn't get through. I was having some technical difficulties. Oh, good. I, I apologize on our end. That, that might have been on us. But <clears throat> I could actually hear a coach. I could actually hear a hello in the background of, I think, someone's. I don't know if you guys are. That was me. Okay, there we go. So welcome, welcome. We welcome you in. Thank you. Glad to be here. Just um, very excited about this upcoming season. Um, very honored to have uh, both Kyron and Kobe have an opportunity to represent our university. These two young men epitomize what we look for in our student athletes, uh, doing all the things that you ask for on the field as well as off the field. Both at this time are both college graduates working on master's degree and exemplify all of those traits that, uh, that we look for, toughness, uh, intellectual prowess, skilled, uh, eager, determined. Um, those are the things that we look for in our student athletes here at Magnese, and those young men certainly show that for us. Um, so uh, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. We already asked Kyron a question, but Kobe, now we have one for you. You were sidelined with an injury last year. So what is it like to finally be able to get ready to prepare to take the field again after all that probably rehab I'm going to go through last year? To be completely honest with you, the preparation for this season started as soon as I had surgery mentally. But to physically prepare for this season, it means the most to me. It means the world. To be sidelined and, and, and be from the outside looking in is, is definitely a blessing to be able to put in work every day. And then a kind of a specific question on that from Rick Saro. Um, how did you, you know, watching how the offensive attack it attacks the defense from a different point of view, what was that like being able to watch that from the sidelines and how will you apply that in your playing this year? To, to be completely honest, our offense found their identity this past year and it, it, was, it was amazing to see because in the past our offense wasn't as great as they were this year. So, I mean, they found their identity and like I said, everything happens <laughs> for a reason. What are you most looking forward to about finally being able to play again? Uh, going one-on-one -on -one with Kyron Sutton. And <laughs> I love it. A little, a little friendly competition here on the Zoom. Um, Kyron, for you, you know, being a senior and a leader for this team, what, what, what things have you been doing in the off season to try to, you know, make sure that everyone is staying motivated, staying focused, especially given the circumstances with the pandemic? Well, first of all, you know, we just we always keep, we always keep in touch, uh, making sure the team is together. Everybody's, you know, finding ways to work out and, you know, stay up in shape. Um, you know, doing a little thing, staying out of trouble, staying, you know, um, corona free. <laughs> so just, you know, trying to stay up. Coach Wilson, we have a, a question for you. This being your first season leading McNeese, they had a successful season last year, but what, what are you trying to do to put your Frank Wilson touch on it and continue to um, build upon that success? To build upon a, a tremendous legacy. Um, McNeese know how to win. This place has always won at a very high level. Uh, I got firsthand experience um, as a player playing against the uh, McNeese Cowboys and uh, for three years going 0 for 3 and finally in the fourth getting uh, a win. Uh, but it's, it's a very, very prideful uh, tradition program that have had great players for many years, that have had great coaches for many years. And so my only attempt is to, to get us back in our rightful place. You're right. You know, a seven game win season for Magnese is considered a down year, where for others that may be considered a very good year. And so it just tells you about the standard, about the bar that has been set here, the expectation from not only the, the players, the coaches, but also from the community and our fan base. And so we want to be able to improve upon that. I think we have quality young men that have bought into the things that we're doing uh, and, and, and not um, starting something new, but just getting back to our winning ways, getting back to our standard of excellence and not compromising it for anything. Coming in as 
first year head coach, there are challenges and difficulties that you'll deal with on any given year. But this in this particular situation, given the pandemic, you know, you're not able to see everyone in the spring and in the summer. How have you and your coaching staff tried to, um, you know, implement your strategies, your philosophies, your ideas to these players? As best as we could. It's, it's, it's been very challenging, to be honest. Um, you know, for us, we came in and we went through our fourth quarter program, which uh, are the rigors of, of our program. And we test our players and we prod them and we see exactly uh, what they're made of and uh, kind of filter through those guys who are built to be uh, Magnese, Magnese Cowboys. And so we're able to do that and identify those guys and the ones that are with us now and still standing will be the guys that we'll win, uh, we'll win games with and hopefully compete for a conference championship, with his, which is our goal. Um, not having spring ball was tough. Uh, we creatively uh, built our football school curriculum which allowed us to go even in the pandemic when we could not be here by way of Zoom to have communication with our young men. Uh, they did an excellent job with that curriculum. It had lesson plans, if you will. It had quizzes, it had tests, and a speed up. Now, certainly they were very eager to get back to the field. So the first time the uh, phase one was lifted and we were able to come back, uh, those young men came back and great shape some not so great shape but it was good to get our hands back on them and be around them uh, from a strength conditioning and speed enhancement standpoint we continue to do those things and build a curriculum that could then go to the football field and practice the things that we had been talking about in a classroom setting and so we're looking forward for this friday for the first time we're able in a long time we're able to go out with our football team with the ball uh, with the modified walk-through, run-through sessions that the NC2A, NC2A allows us to have. Uh, so I think it'll be fun. Uh, our team is chopping at the bit. They're very eager to get back on the football field, and we're eager to coach them. I'll ask this to both you student athletes. <clears throat> like, Colby, I'll start with you. What did your um, training look like the last couple of months, whether it was at home, if you found a, a gym, if you were able to just find a field? What, what did it look like for you? No drop off at all. No drop off at all. I just found a way to make it happen. Like being sidelined during the season, this quarantine actually gave us a chance to get a step ahead of the competition. And we took full advantage. And then Kyron, for you, what did it look like? Were you running at home? Were you lifting weights at home? What did what did the training and the strength and conditioning um, look like for you in this in the last couple of months? I pretty much ran a lot. Um, so I had my daughter, so I couldn't have weight. So I just used her walking up the stairs, picking her up, uh, doing sit-ups, up-downs, et cetera. Adding, you know, adding Maddie, a little weight. <laughs> hey, Maddie, one of the things, uh, hats off to our strength conditioning staff. Uh, those guys who were able to build a workout uh, platform, if you will, for those guys who had accessibility to a gym, those guys who did not and have to use their body weight for the workout, as well as our running regiment. So they, they were all giving, uh, given specific things that they could do during the time in lieu of or in spite of not having a, a gymnasium or a, uh, a weight room with the, with the resources uh, of bars and uh, things of that nature. That's awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad you have uh, top-notch strength and conditioning people who are able to tailor it to everyone, everyone's <laughs> situation. Um, yeah. here's, a, here's a question for you, Coach. Um, with the secondary backing up a restock um, <clears throat> of a defensive line and linebacker unit, sorry, real fast, let me just reread that. Um, with the secondary backing up a restocked defensive line and linebacker unit, how much extra weight will that carry on <clears throat> some explosive plays this season? How much what? What's the how last part? How much extra weight will that carry, not for giving up explosive plays? <laughs> Who asked that question, Maddie? That's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just reading what I'm giving. <laughs> so we, we don't plan on giving uh, – hopefully, our plan is not to give up many explosive plays. That's kind of not within uh, our DNA. We've been fortunate. We've played good defense here for a very long time. Uh, and I think we'll be able to continue in our winning ways in doing so. Um, we have some guys that have some experience at the defensive line, but we, we have lost a lot. Uh, we bring to our, our team some additions uh, 
with this past year signing class, some uh, are graduate transfers like Isaiah Chambers. Other guys are junior college or, uh, or other university transfers with years of eligibility, along with those guys that are currently with us. Um, you know, I like our team. I like us up front. I think we're talented. I think we have size. Uh, and I think we have a chance to be really good in, in, in the front uh, with our defensive line. Our linebacker core, uh, I'm excited to see. You know, I think we have some talent there. Uh, we moved some people from other positions to, uh, to get the best uh, group on the field. Uh, but it's a group that hasn't been tested a whole bunch, to be honest with you, Maddie. And so our linebacker core will be one that we look forward to coming to fruition. Our secondary, I like our secondary. Um, I think we're as talented as anyone in the conference. Uh, we're as talented as, as most secondaries that I've been around. I think we have guys that have game experience, guys that have started for us, guys that have many accolades, but guys that understand how to play well together uh, within the chemistry and the confinements of our schemes. And so that's what I, I, I think our back end is our most experienced group of playing together. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited to see us to play uh, quality defense and hopefully not give up uh, explosive plays. <laughs> Yeah, I apologize for that. No, you don't <laughs> have to. It's, it's a fair okay. question. <laughs> it's all good. I saw, I saw Colby shaking his head. He's like, that's not going to happen. Um, speaking on that. You at least want to limit them. Exactly. <clears throat> um, speaking on that for you, Colby, um, you know, obviously he, he just touched upon how as a unit, you guys are very strong and collective. But what has it been like bringing in a, you know, a new defensive coach, a new defensive mind and trying to learn those schemes? Yeah, I mean, it's nothing new. We had Lance Guidry as my freshman year. Tommy Restivo was our <laughs> defensive coordinator. Then the next year, last year, we brought in a new DC, Jim Gush. This year is Coach Brown. So, I mean, adapting is what we do. I mean, it's, it's nothing new to us. Similar scheme as, as Coach Guidry ran here. So, it's nothing. And like Coach Frank said, we have a lot of experience on the back end. Guys just adapt and adjust. Perfect. There you go. That's, it. That's the answer to the question that we had about the defense giving up big <laughs> plays. It's not going to happen because they're adaptable. Um, Iron, for you, offensively, um, you know, what do you think you guys need to do in order to continue the success? I know you return your guys' anchor in um, Cody Orgeron being the quarterback. You know, how, how will that help you guys this year having that, especially you and him already having that connection? For one, well, you know, we all bought it. We all bought them together. We all came together as freshmen, so we got the chemistry. We always putting all putting the hallway together. You know, staying after, you know, just catching routes, catching balls, etc. Um, so I mean, it'll always be a good connection, and we just got to keep playing as a team and you know following coach's lead. Coach Wilson, another one for you. Um, what are some things that you learned at your time um, at UTSA, being the head coach there, that you may be able to? implement or you just know from experience now um, that you'll you'll take to with you at McNeese? Now I've been very fortunate um, to be around a lot of quality uh, coaches, um, assistant coaches, coordinators, as well as head coaches. Um, and then I got the opportunity to go in on the front end with a couple of guys. And so when Larry, when, when Ed Ogeron got his first job at Ole Miss, I was fortunate enough to be uh, his first hire on that staff. When Larry Fedora became the head coach at Southern Miss, um, I was his first hire on the staff. Uh, when Lane Kiffin got his first college coaching job at Tennessee, um, got a chance to be with him on that staff. And so um, what that did for me was give me an opportunity to see it from a ground level from the very beginning of the first days of, uh, of a program building process. And so uh, I thought those things helped me tremendously in the first job uh, at UTSA. Uh, but then there were still a lot of things that I could learn from it. And uh, probably at the back end of it in the month of December, this past December, self-reflection. And uh, able to talk with guys like Mike McCarthy, uh, the former head coach for Green Bay, now and current head coach for the Dallas Cowboys, and other coaches that were in the process of move, moving around that we would, we would get together and we would actually um, self-reflect and, and self-scout, self-study, if you will. Everything from time management to practice schedules to meetings time to game day management to play call schematically, all of those things. So I think, Matt, there are a lot of areas that I can improve in, 
Uh, I am still a work in progress. And uh, I think when you, when you figured it all out in any profession that you're in, that, that, that time you're probably ready to, to retire. And so I'm nowhere near that right now. Uh, still growing, still learning. And I, I think there are uh, various aspects of uh, the head coaching role that I, I took away from it that uh, that will better serve us in this time around. I think uh, I'm a better head coach today than I was four years ago in 2016 at UTSA. And uh, I think that will bode well for us. And hopefully I can learn from those things and grow and grow this team to get us back to our, our rightful place. Another question for you, Coach, from Richard. <clears throat> Um, you talked about, uh, you know, working under Coach Orgeron, and now you are going to be coaching his his son. What have you seen just initially based off of, you know, the film you've watched or maybe the, the couple practices you guys had in the spring? Uh, you know, he was always a tough young man. He was always a bright mind, uh, and he continues to show that all, every day in our practice with his leadership skills and things of that nature. Uh, so very pleased with Cody and the progress that he's made over the years. He works diligently, extremely hard uh, at his craft, at his position. Uh, we've added a little depth to our quarterback position with Walker Wood transfer from Kentucky. Uh, I believe in, uh, you know, C. Burke probably stated it best early when you ask him what is he looking forward to. Uh, one of our best and our brightest is Kyron Sutton, and that's who he wants to go against. I believe iron sharpen iron. Our program is built on competition. And so we've added that, not just at the quarterback position, but at every position. And I think it will help us become a better football team as those guys grow individually by competing with one another. Uh, but excited about both those young men at the quarterback position and not only the quality of players that there are, but also the quantity that we now have two guys that we feel very comfortable with. Yeah, you just mentioned that another question that came in was talking about the depth that you've seen, um, whether it be offense, defense, special teams, um, which unit do you particularly like the amount of depth that you have for this upcoming mm -hmm. season and how, how might you be able to share the wealth between a lot of different players? Um, you know, we, got, we have spots at every position. I think at the receiver position, we have two veteran guys there that have played extensively and contribute a lot, but we have some talent there that we need to grow around them. Um, at the backfield position, we've added uh, some talent there. Uh, we bring back, uh, you know, Jacoby Skinner. We got Elijah Mack and we bring to the fold uh, two other transfers that come to us in, in, in AJ and Deontay that'll add value and competition at the running back position. We have some guys that have played extensively for us at the offensive line. Uh, but we went out and we, uh, we went and got the best that were available to shore up our offensive line to give us quality depth there uh, from a offensive line position. I spoke about the quarterback deal. The same thing, defensive line. We had some very talented uh, offensive linemen. Uh, Chris Livings and those guys uh, played outstanding for us. Uh, but I think what we went out and recruited uh, will allow us to not skip a beat. Hopefully those are big shoes to fill, but I think the guys that we have will be able to contribute and contribute early to us at the defensive line position. And uh, we have a lot of young talent in the back end um, to give us some depth there, as well as uh, a transfer from Tulane University, Chris Joyce, who is a veteran player, a little older than the other guys that we picked up in the signing class. But overall, we addressed the needs of our football team, uh, added a kicker to give uh, a place kicker so that we didn't have one person doing uh, the dual role of punting and kicking and kicking off. Uh, so we've added quality depth there as well. I uh, bought in a long snapper that just joined us. Uh, so we, uh, we looked at the attrition of our roster. We look at the management of our, of our team and we address those needs to allow us to be able to play with both quality and quantity uh, in this upcoming season. So I'm pleased with our football team and where we're at right now. Coach talked about it earlier, but this is for you, Kyron and uh, Colby. What are you most looking forward to about finally getting to take the field with your team this upcoming Friday? <clears throat> All right. Um, I'll say just run it past everybody. <laughs> yeah, me, me <laughs> I say me personally looking to build that team camaraderie. We've been separated coming out here doing drills and stuff like that. And, you know, just bringing everybody together and building that bond we need to win this conference championship this year.
You know, Maddie, uh, Kobe makes a great point there. there there's a lot of um, adjustments to be made with with um, with COVID nineteen. That it, of course is handed down from the CDC to our our state and then our our on campus task force that we have to abide by uh, and certainly want to because our players' health um, is is most important for us. And so even right now, the locker room, the practices, the things we've been doing um, until the 24th, uh, we haven't come all together as one. Um, and in and, and their workout groups, they're in um, uh, pods, if you will, or bubbles, uh, so that not too many people, there's separation or spacing in the weight room. When they go to the field to do their football school curriculum, it's a unit, is a offense, then another time the special specialist, and then another time the defense. And so I think uh, the guys mentioned a, a great aspect of that. Uh, we get to come together, and we, we get to be the family that we are, and there's strength in numbers. And when we come together, uh, I think we're at our very best at that time. And, Coach, I have to ask you, just based <laughs> off of – your experience playing in the Southland Conference and now being a coach. I know we haven't played any games with you as the head coach, but just looking at film, how have you seen the evolution of Southland Conference football? A lot of parity. Uh, I think on any given day that uh, any team could beat another. I don't think there's one dominant um, team, if you will. Uh, back in the day, it was it was Magnese, it was Troy State that were, uh, were the epitomes uh, when I was a player uh, back then. And uh, there's additions <laughs> to the to the conference. Uh, Lamar, of course, wasn't in a conference. Houston Baptist wasn't in a conference. Incarnate Word. So there there's several new uh, teams that are in a conference now that wasn't uh, in the early '90s <laughs> when I was a player. Um, but I I think their uh, the coaching is is excellent. I think uh, the programs, uh, the the quality of the athletes in this conference. Is, is second to none, uh, especially when in consideration with, with FCS. But I think you can step outside of FCS and go play those other teams. And I think that we'll be able to hold our own. I think that teams in this conference can step outside of conference play and go hold their own, which speaks uh, volumes for, of the Southland Conference. I think the Southland Conference, it's kind of behind you. Southland Conference strong. I think it's as good as any. Uh, right now, and I think that is a, a lot of parity. I think there's excellent coaching and excellent student athletes as well. I agree with that statement entirely, Coach. Um, we're going to have to end it there. So if there are any media who did not get their questions answered, please feel free to reach out to the McNeese Communications uh, Department and email them your questions. They should be able to help you out. Um, but again, Coach Wilson, uh, Kyron, Colby, thank you so much for joining me, and we wish you the best of luck this upcoming season. Manny, thank you so much for having us. We appreciate you. Go Cowboys. <laughs>